Choose your character. Throughout his career, Daniel Dumoulay has amassed a significant amount of monikers, and while your average alias is relegated to nothing more than a simple nickname, the additional aliases which Dumas picked up over the years serve the added bonus of representing separate characters throughout his discography, with some of these pseudonyms representing more than just a fictitious character. For example, starting at the very beginning, we have Zevlov X. Before assuming the villainous role of MF Doom, Dumoulay was best known as one third of the rap group KMD. Here, Doom would rap over his younger brother DJ Subrock's production, alongside Onyx the Britstone Kid. At the release of their debut album, Dumoulay was only 19 years old. Unlike his other personas, Zell of X wasn't exactly a character, it was simply a stage name throughout KMD's lifespan. During this time, Doom had a much more traditional approach to the music world, both in terms of sound and the type of record labels the group would work with. The group worked with well-established labels, namely Electra Records, a powerhouse of a label known for signing the likes of The Doors, Motley Crue, and Queen, which is definitely a far cry from the independent record labels Doom would later be known for collaborating with. Dumoulay as Zevil of X even made an appearance before Congress, advocating to Senator Wendell Ford for a motor voter bill. As I understand it, this bill would give you the opportunity to become a registered voter when obtaining your driver's license at the DMV. Theoretically, this would make becoming a registered voter more convenient, especially among young people, a demographic commonly known for having the lowest voter turnout. People have been asking me to make a video on KMD ever since I first mentioned the idea in my MF Doom iceberg. I'll eventually get around to it, but first I'd like to focus on some projects that I'm a little more passionate about. Another thing that's keeping me from making a KMD video is the lack of research material. So for any of you who have a lot of insight on KMD, please feel free to contact me on Discord. I'd like to gather as much research material on KMD as possible. Moving on from the more optimistic early 90s to the darker late 90s, we're introduced to the infamous MF Doom, the name he's most commonly known for. And in my opinion, while Zevil of X was more of a stage name than a character, MF Doom gives us the first real instance of Dumoulay writing from the perspective of a fictitious character. By this time in his career, Doom had been burnt by the music industry, and needed a different and more serious approach to getting his point across. And this is also why I and many others refer to this as Doom's debut, despite the KMD albums that might have come before it. In terms of first appearances, it would technically have to be from a handful of singles he put out in the lead up to his debut album. But keep in mind that these singles are a few years older and less polished than what we would later yet. If you're interested, you can listen to them for yourself here on YouTube. Personally, however, I view Doomsday as his true first appearance as the character of MF Doom. Doom is easily the most reoccurring character we see throughout Doomalay's discography, taking center stage on three out of his six solo albums and being featured on literally all his studio collaborations. Under the Doom moniker, he even makes appearances on other projects, such as Gorilla's Demon Days, or on the track Knock Knock off Bad Neighbor. The character of Doom is also the persona we follow throughout Dumoulay's most prominent albums, Mad Villainy and Mm Food, which makes sense as to why we all know him as Doom, seeing as these are easily his most popular and well-recognized projects. While most listeners are familiar with the name MF Doom, less known is Doom's moniker of Metal Fingers. The MF in MF Doom stands for two different things, Metal Face Doom and Metal Finger Doom. Metal Face when rapping and Metal Fingers when producing. The first project to be credited solely to Metal Fingers is Special Herbs Volume 1. You could also make the argument that Operation Doomsday features our first appearance of Metal Fingers, seeing as the album was self-produced. Additionally, instrumentals from Operation Doomsday would later appear on Special Herbs. Under the Metal Finger pseudonym, Doom would put out over 9 volumes. Metal Fingers would be active between 2001 and 2005, with a final release from Metal Fingers in 2006, concluding the series with the release of the Special Herbs box set. The box included all the Special Herb volumes with a bonus disc, including a collection of KMD instrumentals. One of the most common tropes across Metal Fingers' work is that nearly every track is named after a particular flora. Another trend across these albums is the many different cover arts, both the Doctor Doom ones as well as this parody of the zigzag rolling papers. There's also a couple more variations, but personally, I prefer the originals. For anyone wondering why there's so many different covers, the special Herb volumes were juggled by a bunch of different record labels, most of which don't even exist anymore. Which just goes to show how different Doom's approach became to dealing with record labels. By the late 90s, Doom stuck to working with independent labels, which probably allowed him a lot more leeway in terms of presenting his music as opposed to working with a major label, where you're at the mercy of whatever restrictions your contract has placed upon you.
And the final moniker we're introduced to on MF Doom's solo debut is the three-headed King Ghidra. The character itself is borrowed from Toho's Godzilla franchise, just how the character of MF Doom is borrowed from Marvel's Doctor Doom. 16 years after Ghidra's first appearance, Doom would elaborate a little more on the character in his Red Bull Academy interview. Ghidra's an interesting, um, is an interesting character, you know what I mean? The, the whole direction of Ghidra is like, okay, he's not even from the earth, you know what I'm saying? He's from outer space, you know, and he more challenge, he channels the information to Doom in order for Doom to produce and whatnot. So Doom is kind of, he gets the message from Ghidra. So Ghidra is not even on Earth. He's more of a, uh, like an etheric being, you know what I'm saying? As I mentioned earlier, we're first introduced to Ghidra on Operation Doomsday, more specifically the song Red and Gold, one of my personal favorites off the album. Ghidra is also featured on the cipher of a track, Who You Think I Am, where he raps alongside his fellow Monster Islands R members, a group that Doom was a part of at the time. And while not actually featured, Ghidra is also mentioned by name on other songs like Operation Greenbacks and Gas Straws. The following year after his 1999 debut, Doom and his friend Grimm would put out the MFEP. Within the 7 track project, we get another instance of King Ghidra on the track No Snakes Alive. Three years later in 2003, the same track would reappear on Take Me To Your Leader, but we'll get there in just a second. As four months before the release of Leader, we'd get the album Escape From Monster Island by the Monster Island Czars, aka Midgets Into Crunk. And this is most likely where the Ghidra moniker itself originates from as the whole theme of the Tsar's aliases revolved around giant monster references like Rodan, Megalon, Kong, and so on. So it's probably safe to assume that being a part of the Tsar's was pivotal in the creation and origins of the King Ghidra moniker. As far as I know, this is just commonly known amongst Doom fans. On the album itself, Ghidra produces 6 out of the 20 songs, and is featured vocally on one solo track, Mike Lines which is one of the six tracks he produced. And that's pretty much it. Ghidra didn't get too much time in the spotlight, but that would all change four months later, when King Ghidra would take center stage on his own album, Take Me To Your Leader. A 13 track album running 42 minutes with some really good production by Metal Fingers. This would be the only solo project that Doom released as King Ghidra, and we haven't heard from Ghidra since his 2003 release. Rounding out the list of Doom personas, we have the fan favorite Victor Vaughn, a character who Doom himself describes as a young guy in his late teens who looks up to Doom. Vic's main two projects consist of Vaudeville Villain and Venomous Villain, being first introduced in Vaudeville Villain, which released only three months after Take Me To Your Leader. While Gator made appearances in earlier projects before having his own solo album, Vic was the opposite, by having his very own album and then being featured on other projects. Speaking of which, he makes a fantastic appearance on Mad Villainy's Fancy Clown. The second project in Victor Vaughn's catalog is Venomous Villain, an album that I listened to for the first time over on my Twitch channel. I didn't really like it, but I'm not too surprised. Seeing as Venomous Villain is generally considered the weaker out of the two Victor Vaughn albums, but maybe it'll grow on me with a couple more re-listens. Something unique to Victor Vaughn out of all of Doom's characters is that Vic makes an appearance in Justin Limbaugh's movie Less Miserable. Obviously, it's just Daniel Dumoulin acting in this movie, but he had it credited under Victor Vaughn. Venomous Villain came out way back in 2004, and that was the last project Doom put out under the Victor Vaughn name. Luckily though, unlike Ghidra, we did get some new Victor Vaughn music on the missing notebook rhymes. You can check it out here on YouTube or SoundCloud. Now this is more of a bonus, seeing as I'm sure I would've gotten plenty of comments asking me about pseudonyms such as JJ Doom, Mad Villain, and so on. Long story short, as I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, Doomalay features as MF Doom throw every full line collaboration. But just to satisfy everyone, I'll go through them real quick anyways. Mad Villain is Mad Lib and MF Doom. Danger Doom is Danger Mouse and MF Doom. JJ Doom is Gennaro Jarrell and MF Doom. Neruvian Doom is Bishop Neru and MF Doom. Then there's Zarface meets Metalface and Super What. This is of course Zarface and MF Doom. There's also EPs like Westside Doom and Victory Laps. Victory Laps is by Doom Starks, which is Ghostface Killa and MF Doom. Westside Doom is Westside Gun and MF Doom. The only exceptions I could think of are maybe projects such as Sunny Yvonne or Unicorns, where he handles mostly the beats with no vocal appearances, except for one feature on the Master Ace album. And then after the show, I went back to, the, to his hotel room and I played him the whole album. And I was like, you know, it'd be dope if you could get on the joint. And I want to say February 15th or so, 
he sent the verse. And to my surprise, it wasn't just like a throwaway verse. It was like he wrote specific bars about me, about what the album was about. He talked about the show that me and Marco Polo did with him in in Mon at the Montreal Jazz Festival. Like he, I was glad I waited because that meant more than him just giving me a verse about whatever, just rhyming about whatever. Like he really, he wanted to write something specific, which made it more meaningful to me. To wrap up the topic, let's just appreciate the man behind the personas, Daniel Dumoulay. As without him, none of these characters would even exist. And regardless of whether you know him as Doom, Zeb, or Vic, it's undeniable that Dumoulay has left his mark on the music world as one of the most unique and influential artists ever. With that being said, who's your favorite Doom persona? Personally, not counting MF Doom, I'd say my favorite has to be King Ghidra. I would've loved the follow up to take me to your leader, but unfortunately, that'll never happen. If you'd like to learn more about Doom as a whole, check out my MF Doom Iceberg, where I concisely discuss a handful of Doom topics. Other than that, you can check out my Genius page where I annotate some of my favorite lyrics. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, you could've actually watched this video a whole day earlier over on my Odyssey channel. So if you want to catch my videos earlier, you can follow me on there. If I ever wanted to upload any exclusive content that's too spicy for ad-friendly YouTube, it'd go up on Odyssey. Speaking of YouTube, please remember to leave a like for the almighty YouTube algorithm, if you haven't already. And as always, thanks to those of you who bother leaving likes and watching these videos to the very end. It means the world to me and I genuinely appreciate it. I'm leaving you guys one free month of Discord Nitro in the description and a two month Xbox Game Pass. Lastly, I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons. Thank you for your continuous support and I'll see you all in the next video.